Hi, good afternoon to everyone. Good afternoon to my viewers. I um, must say it's a tremendous privilege to be here this afternoon. And um, I have with me some professionals and they will introduce themselves a little later as they're about to speak. Um, so at this point in time, we all of you would know, I'm just kind of asking if you want to mute their microphones at this point. Yes. So one of the things I want to do is that we are exploring the concept of anxiety this afternoon. And I know there are many, many persons who are suffering from anxiety. So what we're going to do, um, Nurse Williamson? I'm here. All right. So I'm going to... All right, great. Can you just define anxiety? I know we can see at this point in time, if not, you rectify the, um, the problem there. But can you just um, define the concept of anxiety? After which, I'm going to ask Pastor Dutton to introduce himself briefly, and he's going to look at anxiety from the spiritual angle. And then we're going to proceed from there. Okay, basically. Anxiety is our body's normal reaction to danger or stress. It is a feeling of fear or apprehension of, of, of what is to come, a feeling of unease, and it's basically triggered by stress. Your yeah, mic is off to the view. Oh my, sorry. <laughs> yes, to all my viewers, I just want to say to you that I cannot see you when you're on unless you make a comment. Danielle, it's great to see you this afternoon. It's only then I can actually see you. So feel free to make a comment in the comment section. All right, so I'm going to go over straight to Pastor Dutton, and he is going to explain anxiety from his spiritual uh, point of view. Well, I'm sorry I cannot stay for the old program. I've watched it a few times, and I want to be here. I want to congratulate you, you know, for this. I think a lot of young people love it. A lot of adults love it. So great initiative. You. you know, we say when students study at USC, they must not be reflective of other people's thoughts, but they must try something new and innovative. So I am blessed, and I, I thank you so much. You know, when you gave me the topic, my mind raced, because I, I, I only heard from you today. I, I realized I stopped hearing from you. I don't know what sin I have committed. That makes me anxious. But anyhow, I, I like what the first person said, the professional there. You know, a sense of nervousness. The, uh, one of the dictionaries said apprehension and foreboding. You're not sure what will happen, when it will happen, what will be the impact when it happens. And therefore, you, you can't be yourself. And I, I want to say that. You, you just can't be yourself. And I've chosen an example, an example from the Bible that I, 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 you know, I, I believe the Holy Ghost led me. As soon as you told me, you want me to participate in this program, I said, uh-huh. And the Spirit will tell me, Elijah, deal with the issue of Elijah post Carmel. Now remember, when he was by the brook Cherith, he wasn't apprehensive, you know, he wasn't fearful. God placed him in a comfort zone. There was no water, wasa, sorry, yasa, Israel. All right, so his authority had closed down, and it was just he and the ravens, a very sensitive bird, a very empathetic bird, ranking up with the dolphins right at the top of the IQ level there. So, and then he went to Mount Carmel. God moved him from his comfort zone, all right, and put him in a zone of discomfort. Now, as far as we know, he, I mean, there's you stress, you know, you have negative stress, distress, and positive stress, you stress. On Mount Carmel, he was just flowing. I mean, the prophets of Baal, 850 of them, 450 plus 400, tried their best. And it, they looked like they were anxious because they sort of cut themselves and that kind of thing. But Elijah was clear. He had faith in God. And I want to say this, sir, uh, in terms of, you know, people talking about uh, the Floyd issue in the States and everything else. But let me say this, uh, to remove anxiety, uh, from the spiritual perspective, it requires faith in God. And then uh, it, it, it also, you know, requires stepping into the dark. I recall that miracle in the Bible. The waters of Jordan never parted. 
until the feet got wet. The Israelites had to get their feet wet. Well, Martha said, God, part the water to me. I want to come through. All right. And after it, it's parted, and then you're on dry ground, then you step forward. Uh uh, uh uh, around the walls of Jericho. They had to rejoice. All right. Before one brick was dislocated, one atom of one best Crete brick, sorry, Israeli Crete brick, before that happened, all right, they had to shout, they had to rejoice. So, therefore, all of us suffer from anxiety. I'm sure with COVID 19, a lot of people are concerned. I am concerned that even some people around me will, I mean, death might kill them before COVID. They're so anxious. They're so suspicious. They're so paranoid. They're so afraid. They're, they're getting into this foreboding thing. And I want to say that, I, uh, let, me, let me read the text there. Chapter 19, 1 Kings. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. And with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger. That, that, that woman, I mean, sent a messenger unto Elijah saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And it's a really, it's a real thing. Huh? Let me say this one thing. I know a lot, a lot of young people are into this program. Uh, don't, don't feel less than if you are anxious, if you have a sense of foreboding, if you feel that nothing is working for you, if you're not sure of the future. Because one thing about anxiety is uncertainty about the future. You know, Don't be less than. Now, there's a guy who saw ravens come and feed him, waiters and waitresses, all right, Mr. and Mrs. Raven. Come in and couples to feed him. That's my icy Jesus. There's a guy who saw that. There's a guy who was in a comfort zone and moved to Mount Carmel. This is a guy who had endless victory and yet he's anxious. So don't feel bad about yourself if you feel anxious. It's a natural feeling. It's as, as, a, as a professional said early on, it's triggered by a certain level of fear, etc., etc. Now, how did he respond? This man of God, this man of God who prayed and fire came down. Lord have mercy. This man of God who had extreme faith in God. Huh? Who should have, I mean, he had a formula to deal with anxiety. And when he saw that, he arose, as Elijah, you know, and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servant there. Went a day's journey into the wilderness. Anxiety. It is real. Prophets experience it. Principals experience it. Huh? Fully talkers experience it. Psychiatrists and all. And clinical psychologists experience it. And what has to happen is that God drew near to him. Because you see, essentially, he felt his faith in God being challenged. No matter how close to God you are, that devil in the world does not leave you alone. He comes. We talk about doubt, uncertainty. He plants that inside of us. And we must always realize that, you know, with God, all things are possible. And it will come because we are, I mean, we are human beings. You know, we aren't gods. We are human beings. It will come. And when it comes, the first almost automatic thought that has to click inside here is that we must exercise faith in God. We must ask him to help us and maintain a positive mental attitude. Because, listen, if you know, I, I remember I was doing a, I was on Zoom last night in one of my rooms, my, you know, my mom's, deceased mom's room there, and I felt a click. And somebody, you know, that night before in my area, robbers came in in spite of the security and robbed a, a, a grandmother and, you know, a whole family. So when I, I, I'm facing, you know, the camera, like I'm facing now, and I heard something by my window, I start to get anxious one time. I said, Lord have mercy, like they hit in our house. We are, we are, we are the second house to be hit. And then I prayed to God. And all of a sudden, I felt an inner calm. I felt a peace that passed all understanding. So in summary, number one, it is natural to be anxious. Number two, don't feel, as young people say, don't feel a how. Don't be less than. Don't have your self-esteem going down the road faster than Usain Bolt under 10 seconds. Understand that God is by your side. You have to and listen, you have to have that faith in God and understand that He's by your side. Thirdly, fourthly, maintain that positive mental attitude. You know, someone said that a, a particular psychologist, that when you're going through that anxious phase, you must have a kind of automatic click on. To your, to, your, to your accomplishments, to your dreams. 
And of course, the big thing is maintaining your faith in God. I want to just say, I was in Guyana. You know, it's my favorite country. Some people say I'm more Guyanese than Trinidadian. So, Biki might just not agree moment, with that. Just a moment. I'm trying to impose him. myself on a country. But I, I, I was in Guyana. I was talking to a young lady. She, uh, hello? Nurse Williamson, could you please mute your microphone? Was that? Go ahead, Pastor. You're not hearing me? Yes, I'm hearing you. Yes, sure. Uh, yes, I, 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 I was there and I was talking to a girl married with two kids and she was anxious. She said, Pastor, like I was born anxious. I said, nobody's born anxious. Just like nobody's born a racist. We, you know, values are imposed from seniors to juniors when it comes to that racism thing. And she said, she said, Pastor, I, 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 uh, not only am I anxious, it has morphed. This is what the girl told me, married with two children, great husband. She, she said it has morphed into depression. And we have to watch that. If, it, if anxiety is not managed, it could go somewhere else where we do, would not like it to go. And I asked a few questions. I, I didn't come on like a ton of bricks, you know. I didn't tell her, hello, you need to pray and fast tomorrow. All right? You're eating too much food. No, I, I didn't adopt that approach. You, you are challenging God. Uh, uh. Come on. So I told her, I said, I want to ask you a few questions. All right? I, I see two children here. You're married? She says, yes, pastor. I said, these are your two kids? She said, yes, pastor. I said, where you live? She said, that's a problem. I'm anxious. I want to get my own house. I said, all right. You want to get your own house? Where are you living right now? She said, I'm living by my in-laws. I said, how do they treat you? She said, Pastor, they're the best in-laws in the world. You know, you have some in-laws who are outlaws. She said, Pastor, <laughs> they're the best in-laws in the world. I said, all right. I said, what about your academics? And then she said, Pastor, I'm studying now. I'm going back to classes and that kind of thing. I said, so what is your real issue? I say, she said, well, you know, one thing, I, I just, I just want to get the house and everything else. I said, all right, listen, you mentioned one negative and we have exposed five positives. You're married. A lot of girls would love to get married. Number two, your in-laws treat you well. Your children are doing well. You have a brain. You're, from what you tell me, you're, you're always sharp in school. I said, but wait, you have to balance the positives against the negatives. And I see if it's a football match. Like Lionel Messi and those guys, Ronaldo and them guys, you win 4-1. You could play for Barcelona. And she started to laugh one time. And by the way, could I say something with being anxious? No, 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 don't allow anybody to paralyze your sense of humor. You know, the fact that you could laugh, that you could smile. Let nobody break you. All right? Always understand that God is by your side. You have a lot to be thankful for. And have an attitude of gratitude. And finally, go and find somebody to help. You know, I, I have to tell you that. Go on, cut. get involved in the ministry. Check somebody who might be anxious too, you know what I mean? And, and as you start to help them, you almost forget your own anxiety. But I'm saying to you that it, it is natural. It comes naturally. You know, a result of, you know, sin making us uncertain, challenging our faith. The world is getting worse. We not, we not, I mean, there was a time we only studied COVID-19. Now we have to study the riots in America spreading across the world. People are challenging God. Where was God, etc., etc. And therefore, I am saying, use, use your anxiety as an opportunity to exercise greater faith in God, to recover your dreams, to realize that there are people who you don't even know who are rooting for you, who are praying for you. Stick close to the word. Have that positive mental attitude. And God... And, and don't forget the prayer element. Don't forget the prayer element. You know, even as folks are talking about racial injustice and that kind of stuff, I find a lot of speakers are, not, are like scared to mention the word God and faith mm. in him, you know, as the key to the solution. So I, I, I hope and I pray and I trust this program will go from strength to strength. Shabiki, you don't ever look anxious. You know, perhaps you have your own anxieties <laughs> when you're alone. All right. But, but God bless you with this program. Keep going. I'm sure it will grow to be an international bestseller. At that time, you'll be able to be an advisor and I will volunteer. So God bless. <laughs> let, me, let me say a word of prayer, please. Let me say a word of prayer. Sure. Father, I, I thank you for this program. I thank you for this lovely young lady, Sister Shabika. I, I thank Shabiki. I, I thank you for all those who are assisting her, who have the, 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 the testicular and ovarian fortitude to really you know, make it a, a, a world-class, you know, 
um, program meeting the needs of millions of folks. God bless, and as we approach the Sabbath, may your spirit continue to guide us. Is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Dutton. God so, bless. Bye-bye. See you. You and your team. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, great, folks. So that was Pastor Dutton, and um, he works at the Caribbean Union College as field officer, and he, well, he is so much more, his portfolio is so wide. So this afternoon, we are looking at anxiety. He would have looked at it um, from a spiritual angle. And um, today, I have with me... Um, Miss Giselle Francis. Giselle is actually, um, well, we are both prospective graduates and I'm happy that she is here this afternoon. She's going to share some very important information for us. We have also Lavella Sayers. She is a student currently at President's College, a member of the Hopetown Seventh-day Adventist Church. Lavella will also share some personal information with us today. It is my dream and hope that this program here helps to uh, help someone else who is encountering the, the, the aspect of anxiety. I have also with me, um, I call him Dr. Croker, <laughs> but he's going to tell us his exact portfolio. Uh, he works, he's actually a lecturer at the University of the Southern Caribbean, and he is here with us. And I also have Nurse Williamson. There is another nurse that will be joining me uh, sometime on the program. Trust me, folks, you don't have to pay for this information. The only thing that I can ask you to do is to share the video with um, because somebody else will be able to help. There's so many persons who are anxious. There's so many persons who are going through so much. And it's only through your intervention. It's only through um, helping persons that each and every one of us can be able to overcome this issue. I know Nurse Williams, so she has not rectified her, um, her camera issue as yet, but uh, just forgive us this afternoon. You may not see her, but you will hear from her um, as we go through these the elements for today. So, um, Elder, I, I have so many names to you, Dr. Croker, um, Sir Croker. Could you just introduce yourself briefly? And you can you just shed a bit of light on um, anxiety and over the past in terms of uh, perhaps working with persons who um, who have been faced with anxiety? Go right ahead, Doc. Okay, hello everyone. Um, I am Desmond Croker. Right, Desmond Croker is just all you need to know. <laughs> um, I, I am presently the nurse in charge of the chronic disease clinic, a lifestyle clinic in Arima here in Trinidad. Um, so when it comes to anxiety, um, that is, uh, uh, is generally, it generally would fall under the um, psychiatric um, conditions because it, it has to do with your mind. It has to do with how, how you see things. And so um, based on how you would, have, you would see a situation or in some cases, just a, an object um, that will determine how you respond to it. And so anxiety is usually a response to um, a, a particular situation, a particular um, thing that you might be seeing or a particular, um, like say, for example, a you, be, you could be anxious about heights, you could be anxious about, um, about water, and so um, you, you may find people, people may be anxious um, for, for any of those things, but um, when it becomes a problem is where that anxiety lingers, lingers for a very long time. So um, as Pastor said, as um, I think Nurse Williams also said, it's something that we all in, um, experience, but um, the problem is how are we able to get over that initial anxiety? All right, thank you very much, Nurse Coco. So we're gonna hold there, um, Nurse Williamson. Can you tell us, Nurse Williamson? Can you tell us? Okay, great. All right, great. Can yes, you tell me. us? 
can you briefly introduce yourself first of all um perhaps where you work in and the other line of it what exactly is your uh your feel go right ahead okay my name is carrie Ann williamson i'm a registered nurse attached to the fort wellington hospital i'm currently working at the um, quarantine site at Bath our experiment health center i was well it's currently six years since i'm in the nursing field so all right great thank you very much um, and I'm not pardon me i'm saying i'm not attached to a special unit so okay i just work general yes all right great thank you very much for that information and i just want to sh um say welcome to roger who i'm seeing here um hi monster jones welcome orwin and remember for those individuals who are joining us i cannot see who exactly is viewing unless you make a comment in the comment section and then i'll be able to recognize and know who exactly who are the persons who are viewing so norris williamson can you tell us what are some i know Ella, um well norris croco would have spoken about some of the, the 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 causes of anxiety and you would have explored a bit on anxiety but can you explore the different types of anxiety that um that persons actually um go through okay so basically anxiety when it, it um progressed for more than three or six months it's no longer an anxiety attack but an anxiety disorder right and they're basically about five to six types we have panic disorder which is you're experiencing panic um attacks at certain period of time you have phobias for example fears of specific area like you're fear, afraid of heights you have a phobia for the dark you have social anxiety disorder which is extreme fear of being judged by others in social situations. So you normally want to keep to yourself. Mm -hmm. You have obsessive compulsive disorders, which are recurring irrational thoughts that lead you to perform specific repeated behaviors. You have separation anxiety disorder. And this is fear of being away from home or being away from your family, not comfortable being away from home. You have illness disorder, anxious about your health conditions. And then you have post-traumatic stress disorders. This is basically following a traumatic event, maybe the death of a loved one, or maybe you had a miscarriage, just basically um, trauma or anxiety after trauma. So those are basically the type of anxiety we have. All right, thank you so much, Nurse Williamson. All right, what I'm gonna do for, for our viewers here, I have, I know for some of our past shows, I would have had like persons who I would have messaged and they would have been, they would have given us like personal responses based on different situations that they, are in, they have encountered. Today I have with me two individuals who would have consented to come on the program and they are gonna speak about us, speak to us in terms of their personal attacks with anxiety itself. And I trust some of you don't even know uh, when, whether or not your situation that you're facing, if it's the fact that you're anxious, if it's anxiety you're facing with, you don't even know whether to seek a medical um, personnel or what, but I'm gonna hear from Lavelle Sears for us. She's gonna share with us her personal experience um, with anxiety, what she would have faced. And then afterwards, we're gonna hear from Giselle. And if any one of these symptoms, you yourself, you would have been ex um, ex uh, experiencing please be sure to seek medical help. Whether it be um, check your hospital or it could be a counselor, a mental health professional, please check that. I wanna make a very important point at this point in time, especially in Guyana, whenever people wanna say, okay, I'm going to the mental or you hear that somebody went to the mental, there is a sort of stigma that is attached there. And right away, individuals don't want to is like you're suffering from this condition, but you don't want to see mental health or a psychiatrist. I want to encourage somebody this afternoon who are listening. It is for your own benefit. Just like how we have nurses, we have teachers, we have um, doctors, we have everybody specializes in his or her own field. Please never ever be afraid to check a mental, um, a check a medical, uh, well, a psychiatrist in this sense, or some mental person, some personnel to deal with checking you with your mental health. 
it might just be saving you some troubles. All right, Lavella, could you please put on your microphone over to you? Can you just share your experience, your personal experience that you had um, in in about your anxiety attacks that you would have been faced with? All right, I think Lavella has a problem maybe with the internet. All right, just Giselle, I'm gonna take you. In the meantime, we, um, she's rectifying her um, her internet. Okay, so you just want to get um like my symptoms? That yes, experience. your personal experience with anxiety, your symptoms. Right, so actually this year I actually experienced having like a major panic attack. I never had experiences that severe before. And what I used to experience before in the past, so like sometimes I will feel a little bit lightheaded, hot, um, racing and stuff. Most of the times I'll be able to identify what, what was causing me to feel anxious or nervous and I would have been able to calm down and just like forget about it. So I didn't really take it on. I say, okay, I probably just feeling anxious. I probably a little bit went a little bit too far in terms of feeling a little lightheaded, a little faintish and stuff. But this year it was really serious in that it's like I, I had um like I seized up. All right. And um I had um, when I I actually like should be you were saying I actually got um, some help which was professional help from my dean actually of all of um, social sciences he was able to help me and he actually that day the same, very same day he um, allowed me to take an anxiety like a recent year like a little test so I actually have it and it's called um, the Beck Anxiety Inventory and I will just like list some of the things that um some of the symptoms and well i didn't i wouldn't say what reason that i but is what i felt at the time at a more severe stage so i had num numbness and tingling so i had that feeling in my hands and my legs i felt very severely at that time feeling a bit warm or hot right i was like unable to relax fear of the worst happening dizzy and lightheaded, which I experienced um, mild before, but it was more severe at that, well, that day. Heart racing and pounding, um, terrified and afraid, nervous, hands trembling, shaky, unsteady, fear of losing control, and that was really major. That fear of losing control, fear of dying, that was really on my mind. I had a, like, I don't know, I thought I was gonna die, and it was just on my mind. Um, it have other stuff. It have scared. If you have indigestion, I didn't really have that. But after that main attack, like my body chemistry went out of whack. So my whole body was like, I don't know, like my body was wrecked in a week. Because I don't know if it's because of all the. I think um, he was saying like the acids that you know you when your body when you're stressed, your body produces these acids and stuff, hormones and stuff that it releases into your body. So I was like wrecked for about two weeks after that. Um, faint lightheadedness, face flush. He was saying, like, if you're like feeling warm in your face, or whatever, and you're like hot and cold sweat. And I, I felt that a little bit, but I felt it more after the at the um, major panic attack that I had. Within the two weeks, I would wake up in the night with hot and cold sweat and chills. So that was that were these symptoms that I experienced, and these are symptoms of if you're having anxiety or if you're suffering with anxiety. All right. Thank you very much, Giselle, for sharing. Um, hi. Um, I know Nurse Nurse Lester Christian is here with us this afternoon. Hi, Sister Graline. I'm so happy to see you once again. To all our viewers, good afternoon. So, um, so Lester, over the past, uh years being a nurse and, and working in the field in terms of anxiety i one of the question one uh someone posed to me in terms of for us to ask you guys is um if breathing exercises help during an anxiety attack so can you help us with that question
All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Now, um, it's a very uh, interesting question, um, I think. And clearly, uh, that individual uh, would have uh, had some form of experience with um, utilizing that form of, of or that tool to deal with, with anxiety. So the, the short answer is, is yes. And I'm going to give you uh, the reason or rationale why I say that that can help in some instances to uh, help uh, basically a person cope with, with anxiety. Now, when you look at, at these breathing exercises or when you look at the effects of anxiety on the person's respiratory system, we know that they, they would have an increase in respiratory rate they have this sort of shallow uh, respiration that can, in many ways, affect how um, their other vital organs are functioning because of uh, the lack of, of oxygenation or the lack of, um, or the inability basically of the body to get rid of, of carbon dioxide and so on uh, due to the processes that are taking place uh, during this, this period. Now, when a person is, is debreathing or they're, they're performing these exercises, it's helping not only to promote that gaseous exchange, but it's helping them psychologically to um, be able to focus instead of um, whatever would have been that, that factor or that trigger uh, for the anxiety. It's helping them to focus instead of the breathing, um, in, uh, instead of that... Um, that uh, uh, factor that would have triggered it, taking the attention away from that to the, the, the breathing patterns, they have this sense of um, control, right? And it's helping them to, to have that, that, that sense of control. And that in turn would help to uh, alleviate some of the, the clinical manifestations or signs and symptoms that these skin persons who suffer um, who suffer from anxiety. So it's not only helping with, um, with, with those clinical manifestations, but psychologically, it's also going to have a positive impact because they now move from this, this um, stage or place of um, them not being in control. You know, everything is against them uh, uh, to a place where they can now um, regain control of their actions and what is taking place with, with their body. So it does it does help. All right, thank you very much, Nurse Lester. And um, Lavella, can you hear me? If you can, can you put on your microphone and I want you to just share your experiences because I want to just compare to our viewers. We would have just heard from Giselle Francis who would have shared some of our experiences, the symptoms that she would have encountered. Of course, before coming on to the end of the program, I'm, I would ask these personnel to give us some of their solution and then both Giselle and Lavella will tell us how they have been personally dealing with, with anxiety. Go ahead, Lavella, and just share with us your experience. All right, seems like um put your microphone on and let's see if you're gonna get through. Yeah, well, My personal experience with anxiety is... Oh. Jitin Ting, I really want you to read. Being a very scary one, especially...
get experience, helpless, extreme nervousness. Hello? Can you please? And feel like I was about to faint, and I also had this feeling. Uh, as I was Yeah. So that was just All right, um, really and truly technical problems. I wish that the internet access in Guyana can really and truly rectify um, because I, I know many times we want to have some persons and constantly they're being bounced off or they have to. There's really and truly make mention, you made a point in terms of the fact that you felt, you felt as if you were going to die. Can you explain to our viewers exactly what ex what is that really? Or what was that experience like for you? You're redirecting to me all about the valor. I'm re redirecting it to you because oh, I okay. noticed Lavella is really having some really technical issue with her internet. Right. So um I think that that um fear feeling of that um fear of dying was something that I had at the back of my mind before you know um i always like if something go wrong with me if you, you know sometimes some, some of us could be a little bit paranoid in terms of if you feel something in your body like a little something um might be pinching you or you're feeling some kind of weird thing in your body <laughs> i don't know how to explain it but you know something that not out of the ordinary i'm not um as was their custom feeling you think oh i wonder if something wrong with me and then, you know, if we get sick or something, we might diagnose or stuff. And I'm a person like that. I like to go and see, well, what is this um, experience in? Is it anything? And I always had to feel like, you know, I have some underlying conditions, some underlying disease. I, I don't know. <laughs> so that was, like, always, like, something that used to be there, but it wasn't something to make me feel overwhelmed at the time. So now when, when I started ex getting, um, experiencing the anxiety more severe, that now amplified in my mind that okay, I could be dying, and just the feeling of um I think I mentioned forgot to mention a symptom um my chest was tightening at that time, tightening to the point where you couldn't really breathe and it was really hard to breathe at that time and that's where my my whole body seized up because like you said oxygen wasn't getting into my body as it should, so my face and everything was numb so at that point in time I was like okay. Um, probably I'm gonna because this was the first time I'm feeling well it was so severe like I said so I thought I was gonna die and I guess that was what overwhelmed me at the time and all I could have done was um, concentrate on that just breathing I had to take really deep breath but deep but shallow breath because like I said my chest was tightened so I couldn't really take deep breaths it was just like short and shallow and I was just praying <laughs> Basically, so yeah, okay. so that, yeah, that will be different for everyone, but that was it for me. Yeah. All right, great. For any of the nurses here, can anxiety kill you? Any one of you can answer me that, or have you seen patients die from anxiety? All right. So, um, uh, before before I I um talk a little about that, I just would like to um. <laughs> talk about uh some of the things that i heard um being mentioned i think it's um giselle it is uh what she talked about uh just now and a few key things uh, stood out to me you know she said she um she has this um tendency to sort of overthink things and so on 
when you look at uh, the triggers or those factors that can contribute to um, these anxiety disorders, and as she rightly mentioned, everyone is different. So everyone, uh, each individual will have a, a specific um, trigger. We know that persons having this sort of faulty, distorted, or counterproductive thought process or way of thinking that in, in many ways precedes these um, anxiety disorders and the maladaptive um, behaviors that you see in persons with, um, with, with this, right? So um, that's just one of, of the factors that, that, that can lead to it. That along with, you know, things like genetics and other, um, and other, other environmental factors. But a lot of times, um, the way we think, the way we perceive things can play a very, very important role in, in us having these um, anxiety. Another, um, another, another point, um, I think we, uh, I wasn't here from the beginning of the session, but um, it is important that we're able to, um, anxiety is not necessarily a bad thing, right? When you look at anxiety, yeah. Uh, it's not necessarily a bad thing because take for example we have an examination or a test to write uh, we're anxious about what our results is going to be most often and not that propels us to study right so there is a distinction between that sort of normal anxiety that we have that we can generally cope with and um, these anxiety disorders which are many you know all those phobias and so on that we might um, that we might have, right? So there's a there there should be a distinction there. Not all anxiety basically amounts to something um, that is going to impact us in a negative way that we cannot function um, function properly, right? So um, we need to, to to know that. Now to, to your question, now when you look at the, the clinical manifestations of um, persons who suffer from these anxiety disorders. Because they're, they're um, so different in um, maybe how they, uh, what you're going to see in the individual because everyone is different, uh, it's going to affect them in various ways. So you might have mild anxiety attack um, and ranging to severe. The symptoms of that won't necessarily um, kill that individual. But when you look at some of those maladaptive behaviors, as it relates to the emotional state of the individual and and those behavioral changes that that might occur in these um in these persons that can be detrimental to the individual and not only to the individual who's experiencing that as well as persons who might be within that um that immediate immediate surrounding right so it can have or can lead to situations where persons can either take their own life or in some cases take the life of, of others. All right? Wow. Thank you so much, um, Nurse Lester. Nurse Williamson, uh, I just want to know, can do you think that, well, I mean, from your professional uh, perspective, do you think that anxiety can be permanently cured? Well, there isn't any permanent cure for anxiety but um once you understand your anxiety disorder there are steps you can take to reduce the symptom and regain control of your life there isn't any permanent cure for it but um treatment is basically aimed at improving symptoms and helping you to cope with everyday situations okay thank you very much um nurse lester do you have anything to add on that question after that question. So, um, Just before you, is, Nurse Williamson, could you please mute your microphone? We're hearing some feedback when somebody is speaking. Thank you. Yes, go ahead, Nurse Lester. All right. So um, when it comes to, uh, when we look at these anxiety, um, these disorders, right? Um, as Nurse Williamson mentioned, most individuals that experience this, it's something that, uh, would last with them for a lifetime. It's a very complex issue. Um, issue. There are 
um, when you look at some of the, the, the anxiety disorders, some of the phobias and so on that persons might have, when they're experienced to certain therapy, then you might find that this, or, or as they advance in age, that fear uh, might, might um, sort of start to pale, right? Or they might not be as fearful and so on anymore, right? So um, I would say based on what the specific disorder is, might be able to determine how the individual, um, the individual might be able to overcome that. But it is true, most of the, um, most of, when you look at treatment and so on, it's based on helping this individual to cope with some of the, 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 the signs and symptoms that they're basically, um, that they're basically experiencing. So some of these things do fade over time, but then, um, some of them we can see uh, at, at specific times in a person's life might vary in, in, in severity and all of that. Others, they're just there with you, um, with you for, for, for the rest of your life. So you just have to now be able to make changes to, um, to cope with, with those. All right, thank you so much. So of, Giselle, can you tell me as we move on now to some of the um, the preventative measures that you would have been taking in terms of dealing with your personal anxiety attacks and the panic attacks that you would have been experiencing. Can you share with the audience what are some of the things that you would have been doing to help you? Okay, well, like I mentioned, it's only the fear that I had the severe attack and where I really realized that, okay, I'm dealing with anxiety. So the thing first was that I got professional help and was the week just before they shut down. So I was able to get at least two sessions in with um, the professional counselor. And I also reached out to a pastor for that spiritual side of the counseling. So both of them combined, it was good. Um, I also um, tried to, that um, like Pastor Dutton was saying earlier, you know, put in your mind really positive thoughts because it's all in the mind. As, you know, and being able to control the thoughts because I'm an overthinker. So if I let my mind wander, it will carry me down a rabbit hole, <laughs> you know. So um, I have to learn how to, once I start getting any negative thoughts, I have to learn to try and stop those negative thoughts. And you have to replace it with positive thoughts, which can be difficult sometimes, but I've learned to kind of memorize some of the scripture passages. Um, one of them that kept me during those two weeks was Isaiah 26. And verse three, you shall keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon you because I trust in you. So that was one that, you know, anytime I started to worry because I don't know if it's that year after experience that if ever I felt nervous or anxious, I will think that, okay, I'm going to have this major attack again. And that, and that will just make things worse and then I'll start, then I have to like stop read and replace the negative thoughts with the positive thoughts um and the scripture um I also try well the past you know so I try to like switch out the music so I try to only most of the time listen to gospel music um another thing I do too I try to look at like you know, we always scroll in on Facebook and media, so I try to only subscribe to um, inspirational things and positive things. So that, you know, that is also something to, um, it's just, you'll be filling your minds with positive thoughts without even, because, like, you know, we subconsciously taking these things. So just having that, if, you know, I happen to go on my phone, at least I can see something positive, you know, that would help. Um, also, from the experience, I learned that I need to talk more. I'm more of an introvert. I will keep things to myself. I know to kind of suffer in silence. If something wrong with me, you're probably not going to know unless it's really bad and it may show on my face. But um, I will, I'm to suffer in silence. So now I know I have to talk and be open. And that actually helps, you know, talking to other persons and having a support system around you is also helpful, you know. Um, what else? I mean, I have a lot of other things that I do as well. Um, but for the most part, well, praying, number one, for sure, talking. Actually, I have to, like, talk things out with God, literally. See him as a friend and literally, like, 
talk things out with him and that most of the time help and you know those are like those are some of the things that i i do at the moment all right thank you so much Giselle. But yeah <laughs> thank you for sharing your experience um I, i'm gonna take the other solutions from nurse williamson and the nurse lester before um remember if you have questions as long as time permits us we're going to see how best the nurses can address it uh they also i have um before the end of the program i just have a bit of information to share from one of my uh one of my friends she's actually a counselor but she could not have been on the program this afternoon so she just sent some brief information to me but Troy has a very important question after you would have done the um, the other prevention and solution nurses. I want you to address the issue if anxiety can cause heart attack. So let's look at the other. So I'm going to go first. Yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. yes. And I'm going to leave, leave um, Lester to expand. Okay. So um, for some people, right, treatment isn't necessary lifestyle changes can um is enough to cope with the symptoms however in moderate to severe cases treatment will um help to overcome those symptoms so basically the two categories of treatment there's um psychotherapy mainly you meet with a therapist or a psychiatrist who can help you to learn tools to use and strategies to cope with the anxiety whenever it occurs oh and then you could go to medication wise you could use um antidepressant or sedative medication and these work to balance brain um, chemistry and prevent episodes of anxiety in um and they normally work on most of the symptoms basically lifestyle or natural remedies includes getting enough sleep some person would do um meditation you limit your alcohol intake caffeine sugar consumption take uh, consumption sorry take um time take out time for yourself every day just rest from your stressful activities take care of your body you eat a well-balanced diet and in some per cases persons say that they would normally keep an anxiety journal every time they go through the situation they get a book they write down what is there and then they will normally go back to review what it, what changes occur during this time so i'll hand you over to my colleague lesson he will explain some more thank you very much sorry yeah so um based on what um giselle would have mentioned um some very salient points as to how she is dealing with with her anxiety and how um, those would have helped her. So um, those are, are, are um, some very good uh, solutions or ways of coping with, with anxiety. But one of the things that I think she mentioned that is important is that um, she sought professional help, right? She mm -hmm. came to terms with identifying or being able to um, determine that she had a problem right that needed fixing and she did not just sit around uh maybe depend on on on, on a friend or on a, or on someone else to um you know for for various advice and so on to deal with the problem while that is important she sought that that professional help so that mm -hmm. i think is 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 a very very important step and when you look at, at, at this, why is that a good idea? Why should I seek professional help? So the first thing you, you need to look at, these persons, if it's a psychiatrist or you're dealing with a psychologist, or um, in, in it, uh, some instances you're dealing with counselors or these um, mental health practitioners and so on, they're, they're dealing with um, evidence-based um, uh, practice, the advice that they're giving um, that they're giving you is based on evidence, right? Um, when you you seek professional help, instead of um, just focusing on the particular symptoms that an individual might have, these persons would look at the person on a whole, right? 
causes, triggers, how can we deal with that initial trigger? What can we do to help maybe um, in some instances remove the individual from that situation? And not only that, but what are we going to do to help with um, the, 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 the symptoms and so on that these individuals might have? And then when you're seeking professional help, you're thinking about, um, I heard uh, Nurse Williamson talked about, you know, keeping this journal, right? Um, these are things that would be done. There is this record of your progression, um, record of, of your symptoms and all of that, right? Um, when you seek professional help, you're thinking about reducing prejudice, you know, and all uh, persons being judgmental. Um, you're thinking about uh, the um, increasing the chances or likelihood of compliance for persons, right? I know a lot of people. Uh, you might, you might, as as a friend, you might encourage them, but they might not necessarily follow that advice. But if they hear it from a doctor, they hear it from a nurse, they hear it from the counselor, they might be more inclined to um, to heed to heed that. Right, um, these persons, because of um, we're saying they're professionals, they're trained. You're looking at things like confidentiality and all of these things. It's very good that that um, if you can you you can um, sort of seek them out, right? Because you you don't have to be afraid of uh, let's say hearing uh, your story, as we just say about the police, right? Because we, we have um, the, an oath where we have to be confidential as it relates to information and so on that, that is received um, from, from, these, from these individuals, right? Mm -hmm. So it is important that we seek that, that sort of professional, professional help. Not so much because of diagnosing, but then um, being able to navigate how we're going to cope or deal with um, with the problem. Now, there are some other um, things that uh, Nurse Williams also mentioned as it relates to um, how we can deal with it at home. One of the, um, apart from the medications that she used, I'm not going to, um, to dwell much on that because that would be, uh, those uh, medications basically would, would be prescribed by by um, the psychiatrist or whoever is the, the, the doctor that is seeing the, the patient, there are certain things that we can do at home that can help us to um, to cope with with these with these uh, problems. Now, um, we mentioned some of those: being able to identify that you have a problem, right? Yeah. Acknowledging it—that's important. Mm -hmm. Seeking that professional help important staying active and i think giselle talked about this so exercising is not just about about getting the medication and so on but what's our physical health yeah. diet is something that is important as well right so we know exercise um not only helps with physical um health and and well-being but also emotional health as well right and uh studies would have shown that when we exercise it helps to release tension helps to reduce um, stress helps to ease anxiety right um, we know that exercise is not just something that is short term it's not a short term fix right so it is going to in the long term help an individual to cope with it where do we exercise or where should we exercise it's important that um, we go into the open air, you know, go amongst nature. Those are, are places that, you know, are very soothing by a stream, something, you know, that, that, that sort of calms the nerve, right? Um, so exercises or staying active is, is very important. It is also going to help to, and Giselle did talk about this, saying that, you know, uh, she, she, would perform activities that is going to sort of take our mind off of um, yeah. what would have caused that anxiety attack in the first place, right? So exercise can help us to um, sort of refocus, refocus the mind in a way. Then there are some things that I know persons 
when when they're having problems, you know, stress and 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 they're having um, anxiety and all of these things, that there are some things that persons turn to that are not helpful or that are not um, in any way beneficial to treating the problem or with, with their overall health. So alcohol use, we know persons when they're having problems and so on, some of them, they, they turn to alcohol, right? Um, but we know that might just help you in the short term, right? You free up your mind for a little bit, but then when, when, when the high is gone, then the problem is still there. The anxiety is still there. So you want to ensure that persons, they're not utilizing these harmful substances. Um, Nurse Williamson talked about caffeine, right? So um, that's another one that is, that is uh, harmful. Caffeine can actually increase the, the severity of, um, of the symptoms that we're seeing with, with, these, um, with these disorders, right? So stay away from things like um, chocolate, right? Um, these uh, certain carbonated beverages, you know, that have a high, um, high sugar content. We know we have here things like Excel and all of these things that these energy drinks that we like, um, that we, we like to use, right? So we need to ditch that. Caffeine in itself can cause those um, cause nervousness and the jitters and all the things, the anxiousness and so on that persons that persons feel. Cigarette smoking, right? Um, that uh, or the effects of that can we know worsen worsen anxiety, right? For those persons who who um, who use a cigarette because of the nicotine and. Some of those chemicals, basically, that are inside inside of these things, and they're affecting they're affecting the brain and how the brain works, right? And that is why these things can 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 increase the severity of of anxiety. Rest very important. So we talked about activity and how that can help to um, to refocus the mind and so on, but then rest. Is something that is important. These persons we know uh, with with these disorders, they have in many um, instances trouble sleeping for some people, right? Uh, so there are some persons who have a fear of dying in their sleep. They don't want to go to bed, right? There are other persons because of the fear of, let's say, um, just, uh, because of some experience something that would have, um, they would have experienced earlier in the day, they might have that, um, have insomnia. Now, it's important that we rest. Mm -hmm. What can we do to, to, to promote um, sleep or rest in these individuals? We can start by looking at All right, just we have an internet pause there. Um, Monson Jones, I really, um, I acknowledge your question too. I think they would have dealt with more of that. So even after the broadcast would have ended, I want you to just, you can listen back to the latter part of how Giselle, Giselle, Giselle would have started talking about how she would have been dealing with anxiety. So you can look back at, um, listen, listen to the broadcast back and you'll be able to um, address that issue uh nurse let's say internet is done a bit but nurse williamson can you in terms i know he started mentioning about sleep i know there's some persons who just all right let me just add him back all right great all right sorry Tyler, about even that before, even before you continue i want you to elaborate a bit i know you started speaking about sleep about lack of rest uh -huh. but what what happens if somebody is on their bed we only have about five minutes by the way for the show to wrap up but if we uh, have somebody on their bed and they just cannot sleep and they only end up sleeping, let's say, early in the morning, they just, uh, I don't know, there are a lot of negative talk. How can that person, um, how can you, what would you suggest to help improve um, that person in terms of sleep? All right. I wish we have to get some more CEO when it comes to this internet in Guyana to work to work on it. 
Uh, Nurse Williamson, if you were hearing me, uh, I, um, can you address that question? All right, All right good. <laughs> um, I think my phone is overheating, so probably that's why I'm having the, the, um, the problem. Now, okay. um, when we're looking at, at ways to, um, to, to sort of improve on, on rest or to, to get sleep, we have to make it a priority, right? So that's one thing. We... So we have, to, we have to make sleep a priority. Right, um, not having as as many distractions when we're actually in bed, right? So television, the phone, computer, all of these things. Now, if you find and this is such an important question, I want to be addressed because some of the we have some persons who are encountering anxiety they're having endless sleep problems and um just as i would have mentioned to my viewers i think sometime last week there's an anxiety support group that we would have started and um i mean there's some individuals who have sleep problems so i really and truly want this um to be addressed so that if there's anybody else out there with the same issue uh, we can help them Yes, Lester. I don't know. Like, I don't know what's happening with this question and you. <laughs> All right. So, some other um, quick things. So, I did talk about some of them. Avoided um, avoiding things like caffeine, large meals before um, before bed. If you find that you're in bed and you're tossing, you're not getting to sleep. Get up. You know, go out of that of that of that room until you feel sleepy, and then you go back to bed. Writing down your worries before bedtime and going have a, have a routine right going to bed at the same time every night those are some things that can uh, that can actually help help with with that all right thank you very much for for sharing that and my final question i know i am I'm, I'm closing time i'm, I'm even a little uh, over time today but nevertheless i really and truly want us to to look at um if there is someone else who let's just say there's someone else who wants to be helped, but they are afraid of going to, they're afraid of uh, actually checking mental, checking um, psychiatric, uh, doing psychiatric examination. What would you advise those individuals? And please don't forget, let us also address, those are the last two closing questions I want. What would you advise to individuals who want to go and check up, maybe they're afraid of the stigma. And secondly, I really want to uh, answer, want you guys to answer choice question of if can anxiety cause heart attack so so <laughs> okay go ahead listen okay for the question um anxiety attack it would not cause a heart attack right Art attack basically is a blockage in one or more of the blood vessels of the heart. So a panic attack or anxiety attack would not cause a heart attack. Although they have similar symptoms, right? They have okay. similar symptoms, for instance, a panic attack will have this sharp, um, sharp stabbing pain in the middle of the chest. But a heart attack now, the pain will be a squeezing or a squeezing pain and pressure in the chest. For the panic attack, you have racing of the heart, you have shortness of breath. For the heart attack, you have the pain gets worse over time. You have nausea and vomiting. You will have um, shortness of breath too, but the pain is basically different. So the panic attack or the anxiety would not cause an art a heart attack. All right. Thank you very much, Nurse Williamson, for sharing that. Kadisha, good afternoon to you too. All right, so um, so just the final question I want you guys to address now. Um, so what advice would you give to someone who may want to go, but they're afraid of the stigma attached, especially if they go to see a psychiatrist?
Nurse Williamson or Nurse Lester, whichever one of you or both of you can give um, some advice on that in that area. Okay. Well, you know, there's a stigma attached to it. Uh, when person decide that they're going to see a psychiatrist, psychiatrist, person will normally feel that, okay, this person is mad or so on, right? Yeah. But I would advise anyone, so long as you accept that you have a condition, a disorder, you visit the um, therapist to seek help, right? It is for your health benefit. They, these persons are there to guide you to give you um ways to cope with whatever you're going through so even though there's a stigma attached to it even though persons will look at you differently i would advise them to still go ahead pray about it go ahead and visit the um counselors and they are there to help them get through whatever situation that they're there to help them get through whatever situation all right thank you very much nurse lester I think I would I would I would have um, talked about some of the reasons. All right, so Giselle, I want you to um, for your closing remark. I want you to because of the fact that you're actually going through well, you're actually still recovering from anxiety. I want you to share with us um, share with us. Uh, what would you advise individuals who may be facing anxiety and they are afraid to seek, let's say like how you went and you seek a counselor, what would you advise them? Well, I think because in a way at that point, I was like forced to, like I had no other choice because it was so severe. I needed, it's like, I had no other choice. I actually knew that, you know, before that it's good to just go and just seek counsel and just, you know, just for therapy. Um, therapy reasons, you know, but um, people shouldn't be afraid because, I mean, it's your health, you know, so you shouldn't um, let others discourage you because you want to seek your well-being and, you know, it's something that you, you want to deal with. You don't want to have to live with it all the time and trying to do things on your own don't always pan out. You might just end up spinning out of control, so it's always better to seek that help and they will help you to get to the cause of that problem, find out the triggers and all of that. Because the ideal thing is really finding out the causes of why. And once you, um, they, they help in navigating that. And once you can find out the causes, it will be easier for you to manage and use different coping mechanisms to deal with it. So it's all beneficial for that individual. Thank you so much, Giselle. All right, let's so over to you. Let's hope that your internet keeps. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So um, quickly, let me see. Um, I, I did talk about some of the reasons why it's important to, um, to seek professional help earlier, right? But just to, um, to reinforce and based on, on what was said just now, there is a stigma that is attached to, um, to persons with mental illness and, and so on, especially here in, in Guyana, right? Um, it, it, it's important for us to know that when you look at psychiatric disorders, these anxiety disorders by far are the most common. Right, so there are a lot of persons who um, who are having these um, these issues, right? So it's not just you alone. And I think when persons start to, to realize that, it makes it easier for them. You're not the yeah. only one who who you know is, is sort of going through these things, right? So um, that's something we need to come to, to terms with. Uh, in terms of the the professionals being able to help you to navigate and um, sort of uh, develop. Uh, guide you along with those coping strategies, coaching you um, with, with, with these problems. We do know that um, one important thing is, is awareness, which I think, um, and I'm, I'm so pleased, you know, uh, to be a part of this, this uh, session this afternoon, because bringing awareness to these issues, um, I think can reduce the sort of stigma that is attached to it uh, greatly, all right? So, sort of um, education, is education is very, very important, right? So we need to educate because ourselves education, about these conditions, educate ourselves about... Just a moment. 
go ahead, Lester. Yes, so education, I was saying, is, is very, very important. So we need to sensitize the community at large about the, the prevalence of these, um, these problems and the negative effects that they can have on individuals. And not only that, but that they can seek help and help is available for, um, for these problems, right? So um, it is important that that message is, is out there. We should not, as um, I think Giselle mentioned, at the end of the day, you're thinking about helping not only yourself, but those persons who are um, in, in, your, in your surroundings, the family, think about the effects that those attacks and so on can have on them. It's not only scary for you, but then for these persons who might not understand these things, it's also a very scary experience for them. So we also need to, when we, we're thinking about treatment and, and, and you know, therapy and the counseling, we should not forget the, the, the family and, and, and all of that. And in a lot of instances, these attacks, they're, um, they're as, as we just say, they run in the family, right? Genetics is, is, um, plays an important role, role in it. So we, we should not neglect the family um, when we're dealing with these, um, with these situations because it is going to have an impact on how the family is, is functioning and coping as well. Right, so that's why it's it's important that that we're seeking that that professional um, professional help because that person would be able to look at at you as a whole or on a whole versus look, just looking at the symptoms and what you can do to um to 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 get rid or remove um those those symptoms, right? All right, thank you so much. So I just wanna as we wrap up this afternoon. Um, my the, the comments that my the, my cons my cons the friends she would have sent, um, well most of you would have um, addressed it in one way or an, or another, but um, in terms of when it comes to social anxiety, one of the uh, very important point that she continues to um, reiterate is the fact that we need to connect with people, and I just want to end on that particular note. I mean. Just connect with people. I know all of us don't like to say and like to um, explore and discuss what we are facing with. And um, I'm so happy this because of the fact that Giselle would have shared her experience before. That's how I knew that, okay, she could have been a perfect person to come on the program. I must say thanks to Giselle because she was she was able to help Lovello uh, to actually start working through the process of overcoming her anxiety. And Lovella is only in Form 1, which is Grade 7. I just want to say to our parents out there, anxiety doesn't have an age. So don't feel as if you have to be old or you have to get a world of problems. Like oh, some people have. You don't know what your young people are going through. So until they are faced with situations, I want to share this program. Um, there might be some other school child or some other adolescent who may be going through this same, these same symptoms. And they're seeking ways of helping themselves, but they just can't. There's so many persons out there who, who are trying to rest, but they just cannot sleep. I want you really and truly, let us try and see how best we can help it. COVID situation, of course, has not really and truly helped the situation. It has made it worse for some individuals. And even as I would have done research, there there there's significant rise of persons who are facing anxiety in the different countries because of COVID, because they're very fearful of what will happen in the future. So I just want to say thanks once again to Norris Lester. I know Norris Croker, um, he had some internet um, issues, so he could not have continued on the program. Norris Williamson, thank you so much for being here. Pastor Clive Dutton, who would have shared to us the spiritual aspect of overcoming anxiety. And I want to leave with us this scripture um, that says, be anxious for nothing, but by prayers and supplications and thanksgiving, let our requests be made known unto God. And even though you may not be spiritual, trust me, God really and truly, his hands are, they're open and they're willing and ready to receive anyone. So feel free to connect, feel free to contact me. I, I may not have all the answers to your problems, but at least I know persons who can be able to help to address the issue. And um, as I was speaking yesterday to one of my friends, she could not have been on the program either, but she's a pharmacist. And she said to me, you know, medication is the last option. So for some of you who like to rush to medication for any list, um, any, anything that you're facing, please 
let us try with all of the other remedies and all the other solutions that individuals would have been trying with. And by the grace of God, God will help us to overcome. So I just want to close in prayer and then I'm going to just say bye to every one of us and thank you all for viewing this afternoon. Let us pray. Great God and eternal Father, we are thankful for this afternoon amidst the little internet problems that we had, but we thank you for the individuals who are willing to share their experiences, share their knowledge, so that at the end of the day, someone can be helped. I pray, Lord, that you empower our audience. May you touch the lives and the hearts of individuals who may be facing anxiety at this point in time. And Lord, even amidst COVID, may you help, Lord, that we can find ways of remedying this situation. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you to Jesus Christ. Amen. So may God bless you all. And I'm going to see you uh, on Monday, Gospel Life at 2. We are exploring the concept of last week, Monday, we looked at guilt. We are looking at unforgiveness Monday because there are many individuals don't know how to forgive persons. There are many individuals, they still have grievance in your heart for individuals. And so I have a panel of persons already set and prepared for next Monday. And they are going to help you through the process of forgiveness if you're facing uh, unforgiveness, if you're facing with that issue. So thank you once again, nurses. Thank you, Giselle. And thank you, Lavella. Thank you, Pastor Dutton. Thanks all my viewers. See you on Monday, Gospel Life. Have a wonderful and a fantastic weekend.